I suppose everyone's going to stand here. And do <laughs> so uh, I was going to begin in a different place, but I think I have to take notice of the previous speakers. And I want to start by saying, what's wrong with big thinking? And this is what we were talking about in the, uh, the Urban Design magazine when we talked about reimagining the city. What we've heard here is a lot about the fine grain, the soft touch, the surgical intervention, and all fine and good, but that's not enough. If you like, what I wanted to say in the beginning was that our attitude towards the city today is mainly shaped by a rejection of modernity and modernization. And the values of modernity in terms of the personal freedom that long centuries of struggle allowed us and also in terms of technological development. And now to a certain extent, uh, what I sense from the previous speakers is, uh, although it's not necessarily a rejection of modernity, um, but there is a line of intellectual heritage to the three presentations that stretches from Jane Jacobs to Richard Sennett that are all about ameliorating modernism. But we're all shying away from doing that historic task that every generation before undertook which is to create a city after our own image. And this is what I want you to think about. And in order to kind of develop these ideas, I'm just going to look about a couple of points that Alistair mentioned in the outline, uh, which feed into a lot of the assumptions that most urban design professionals, academics, government officials accept uncritically about the city today. And they're basically the point about communities and the point about uh, the obsession with designing behavior. Now, it seems to me that today uh, we're far more attracted by the image of homogenous communities over the anonymous experience that the metropolis can offer. And this is something uh, completely alien to me. I didn't move to London to find a community of Lebanese people that I can live with. I, I moved over here to meet lots of strangers and discover new things. But what's really the problem with this attitude towards building communities is, first of all, the way the government approaches it, being supported by a lot of professionals, it's a very paternalistic attitude. It's not our job as professionals or academics to build communities. That's a very intrusive attitude. Secondly, it's a huge misunderstanding of the way modernization and modernity in general have transformed the logic of socialization. We're no longer talking about uh, secluded, if you like, and confined communities that operate within a small geographic area. And we're kind of in denial of the achievements of modernity in terms of personal mobility, for example, which is completely under attack today. And that has allowed us to find new patterns of social interaction. Just because we live in suburbia doesn't mean that we don't have a social life. We have a different choice. We have different people that can mix with. That's not confined with that physical. Uh, uh, geographic area. And to shift to that other point, uh, it seems to me that as well we're far more interested today in designing behavior rather than designing cities. I mean we hear a lot of talk about and proposals and initiatives, but I don't see a lot of new cities being built, a lot of quarters in existing cities being transformed. And it's, it, it appears to me that it's far more interesting to go into this aspects of how encourage people to use space and how can they perform in a certain way. And actually, I think it's quite ludicrous to see that we encourage people to behave disorderly in space. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it anyway. But the implicit assumptions beyond that is that what's happening now, a lot of uh, uh, that attitude is being manifested uh, into the hyper-regulation of public space and actually making socialization much more restricted rather than open. So if you talk about things like uh, the anti-smoking laws or if we talk about the restrictions on drinkers, if you come to my local pub on a Friday night, um, and allow me to say local, um, uh, it's like it's become uh, almost an exercise of uh, maintaining discipline where we have to stand behind the barriers, smoke in certain areas, uh, don't, don't shout out loudly, and that's something that's being adopted also by professionals when they look at the city. Although you might hear sometimes, and you've heard today, attitude towards saying we should encourage that behavior and la 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 la. But the implicit assumptions that is both common to the attitude to communities and designing behavior, it, we tend to accept today that there is a direct relationship, if you like, a deterministic one between the physical environment and the behavior in people in it. 
And this is something that is never challenged. And it's a legacy to a certain extent uh, of some of the policies I mentioned before, like zero tolerance policing and broken windows theories, but it's, uh, it's kind of far more reaching today. And I see that a lot of urban design professionals and academics are kind of internalizing that logic and using it in their work. So we hear about designing out crime, we hear about how to make better neighborhoods, and all that sort of thing. Let's be a bit modest. We can be arrogant in the scale of our ambitions, but let's be modest about our ability to influence other people's behavior. Even if that were possible, I would not accept it on myself to go and intrusively design other people's behavior. And what that kind of logic uh, kind of entails uh, is that we have a very dim view, view of humanity. And we tend to think of our, uh, the citizens of the city, the end users, as laboratory mice, that we're going to orchestrate their movements and tell them what to do and stage their activities. And I, I don't want to challenge that. <coughs> we say there are historic challenges towards us today. The cities that we live in don't reflect our age. Let's do what we do best. Let's come up with new housing typologies and stop messing around with uh, in the, the old fabric of the city. Let's come up with visionary solutions for transport provide more mobility, not less mobility, and let's not hide be between these uh, work games. So what I want to close by is, I want to invite all my colleagues in professionally and academically as well, as a first step that we must resist these very intrusive agendas as a starting point toward liberating our profession and our thinking. And as well, dare to think of new ways of reimagining the city. And having visited the Corbusier exhibition today at the Barbican, um, in the media opening, uh, I came up with an amazing sense of his achievements and his visionary and radical thinking. And I would say, I'd rather that we revive that kind of vision and, and radical thinking to produce cities after, after our own image, to produce a city of the 21st century, rather than trying to revive the one of the 19th. Thank you.